Uh, we were obviously intrigued by our, our friends in Manhattan Research presenting a lot of data, and we work with them in helping to encourage doing a study in this area because video detailing had initially started back uh, kind of in the, in the internet VC uh, world back in uh, 2000, 1999, that kind of thing, and it taken down about $250 million when it went under, and us coming back into the world to kind of build a model that we thought was eminently sustainable, we wanted to kind of look at what was happening from a physician interest standpoint. And I think as the earlier models found, physicians seem to be very interested in being able to, on demand, get high quality medical interactions with some people who understand the clinical data about individual products. A lot of the social networking issues are the fact that peers don't always know clinical data about drugs, so a lot of the discussions are kind of biased by the individual peers and may not actually have the empirical clinical data that helps physicians make a better decision about the right way to use a drug. What we've tried to do and have now seen in a fairly decent scale is to start identifying how we can better serve physicians as an industry by making knowledgeable people with all of the proper clinical data available to that physician on demand when they need it, regardless of where they are and pretty much whatever time of day they need it. Now, what it's allowed us to start thinking about is how you can take what was our traditional sales force that's having considerable number of problems in our organizations and be able to move that to an environment where we can put them wherever that physician would be interested in going to look for medical information so that they can provide high quality consistent education to those physicians again on demand. Now what it's allowed our clients to do is start looking at an alternative sales channel. Now I use sales channel uh, probably loosely because it is an education channel. These reps spend time with physicians, they're not trying to close them, they're not loading sample closets, they're not doing the things that maybe reps in the field are trained to do, they are providing a high quality interaction of a very educational nature. So the right patients get the right drug, the wrong patients don't get the drug that they shouldn't be getting. So we are helping the physician population be a lot smarter about how to properly use your drugs because to be honest with you right now, the rep in the field is having a very hard time getting quality time with a physician and therefore that physician is writing drugs in a lot of cases without really knowing what they're writing. This is providing an alternative channel on demand in a lot of our interactions are nights and weekends when the physician is online looking for medical information. We want to make sure that pharmaceutical company content is available in the same places that that physician would go to look for information and it is just as conveniently available. We don't want to suck them to a website that maybe they wouldn't go to on their own. We want to put it where they go. What we can also do is allow that physician to have an engagement with a customer service, a well-trained customer service individual that is a concierge type of interaction where that physician can count on coming and engaging with one of your people who can give them the education they need, can get them the services they need, can get them patient ed, all in one-stop shopping. And that portfolio of services are wrapped around that rep who can enable any of these kinds of services so that physician can get what they need when they need it. We're expanding access methods. Who's covering the square states in the middle of the US with reps anymore? How do you service them? This gives you a very cost-effective way of being able to engage physicians anywhere in the US and be able to serve them properly without having to have the cost of somebody spending windshield time driving around North and South Dakota to try and get to these physicians. And it increases coverage because a lot of our target lists are the same lists that a rep in the field is, is working on. The physician gets to self-select how they're being served and that allows that physician to mix and match and we find, I'm going to show you a little bit of data that 
is suggesting that this is additive to a rep in the field. It's not a replacement. Now, I'm going to go by the numbers. Uh, taking some of the Manhattan Research knowledge base, 89% of physicians are really not accessible. They're in large practices that refuse to see reps or really restrict access. And more of the practices are getting to be these larger industrial practices where your reps are having a harder and harder time getting the time they need to properly educate the prescribers. Now, 89% is a huge number of the highest value physicians. And it's just going to get worse when we're looking at going to universal health care and seeing patient loads go up significantly. The reps are going to continue being the odd people out in the practice environment. Now, 89% are saying, I'm willing to give you an alternative channel. These physicians, as Manhattan Research said, are saying, I need to go online to find medical information because I don't have the access to the content that I need to see in a practice setting. I am not seeing reps. I don't have time to do anything during office hours. So most of them are going online. And that number, as you can see, is going up significantly and getting to a point of being ubiquity. Physicians out of necessity are going online to learn. What's also great about it is they're doing it before and after work. They're doing it on weekends when your reps are home. So who's servicing them? Who's providing the information that they need about your drugs? Because they certainly aren't going to your website. You've all seen the traffic. It's not particularly compelling. And the reality is that means they're going somewhere else, and you're usually not there. So they're finding out from somebody other than you about your drug, and that's not a place, that's not a situation that we want to have happening. Now, what's interesting is to see the growth on going online between patient consultations and during patient consultations. What it's suggesting is when they have a question, they're getting knowledgeable enough to know how to go online and find out some information about how to properly use a drug while they're with patients or around patients. So they're opening up access through these channels that we're not competing in very effectively. And obviously, reps aren't playing there. They're the ones being kind of squeezed out in this scenario. Now, the other number, and this is a number that Manhattan Research just released, I think is a very compelling number. Eight hours a week of additional access. That is the amount of time a physician is spending, on average, online engaged in medical information per week. That's a whole extra day of time that that physician is saying, I am open to learning about medical information. And we're not really an effective player in that to any great degree. 